Seven Hells, what an episode. 80 minutes of pure carnage. When I look back at the Battle of Winterfell, I thought that was peak suffering and death in a battle. But no, this was peak suffering and death in a battle. I said this episode was going to be about choices, and Danny's choice was definitely the biggest. And now we have to see how all of the characters who have sticked by her side all the way to this point, very stubbornly stick by her side, will react to what she's just done. So the first shot we get here is of Damis and Jon walking through the ruins that are now King's Landing. We could tell right throughout the entire episode how conflicted Jon was before they even got into the city. It's clear that the sheer amount of violence they saw on that day will make Davos and Jon rethink all of their loyalties. Jon cut down his own men to stop them from raping people, he called back an early retreat because he saw it was just pointless death, and notably he held back his men and Grey Worm saw that. So it's very possible, I think, that Grey Worm will tell Danny that maybe Jon and Davos aren't quite as loyal as they seem, and they will already compound on top of what Danny already believes about Jon, seeing him tell Sansa as already a betrayal. And of course, we have a shot of Tyrion walking through his worst nightmare realized. Varys' worries came true, Cersei's and Jaime's warnings upheld, and now the city he once protected is in flames. For a long time now, we've been building up this foreshadowing for Tyrion betraying Danny. And now he has more than enough reason to do so, and as possible he'll find a more reciprocal ally in Jon now. We do have to remember that he did betray Danny right before the battle started, release the Unsullied who would definitely tell the commanders about it, and save Jaime. And Davos also helped with their plan so both of them could get exposed as traitors. Now I just have to mention this because it seems like there's way too many Unsullied and Dothraki left. Like I'm almost certain all but six Dothraki suicided into the army of the dead, and I'm pretty sure that most of the other Unsullied died defending the retreat. Like I don't mind the fact of them having Danny's personal armies here, making that more of a roadblock in this episode, just don't show most of them dying in the previous ones. Alright, I just have to say that. The imagery of this preview is really screaming, Tyrant, Authoritarian, Conqueror. We can still see fire raging in the background, and we have shots of primarily here foreign forces, the Unsullied and the Dothraki, which gives us a contrast of both extremes of a tyrant, the imperial kind of stolid guards, who follow out any command regardless of the moral implications, and the screaming crowd of Dothraki, who have just butchered an entire city and are cheering about it, which would be very much their way. Now we also get to see Arya set her sights on Danny. She saw the destruction, the death, she tried to help as many people as she could and only barely survived with her life. She had to ride past the charred corpses of women, children, men, innocents. And she did say she came to King's Landing to kill a queen. But perhaps it won't be the queen she expected. And then we also have another shot of Tyrion coming out the gates with the snow dusted ruins of King's Landing behind him and a face that means business. No doubt all of the Westerosi fighters, advisors, and characters that have supported Denny now despise her actions. They are fully aware that the attack was not motivated by conquest or liberation or freedom, but by pure revenge. Cersei's armies had thrown down their swords, the bowels rang, and yet they attacked further. Danny has always put herself in this divide between the people of Westeros and the people she had in Essos who loved her, and that divide has been widened further. After last episode, we see where her coin landed, and it is not in a good place. And so we get this final shot of Daenerys walking forward, her legions in front of her, her posture cold and steady, with a giant amount of destruction all in front of her. The dragon has truly awakened in her, and Westeros will feel its wrath. So it's clear that this preview is holding back most of the information that will go down in the final episode. The entire series, everything we've known of the last eight seasons, will wrap up in the next 80 minutes. The great victory of the good guys, the guys that have been fighting against the Lannisters this entire time, was a butcher killing hundreds of thousands of innocent civilians. The final battle in this war was a massacre. The dead have been defeated, Cersei is gone, but now the realm has a tyrant that no one can stand against because she has a dragon. The second to last episode in Game of Thrones is always the big splashy event, and we've had that. And so now we'll see those final moments of the show where they tie down all the little loose ends 
and make sure characters make their final choices and set the future up for Westeros. And somehow I think the blood crazed tyrant lasting for entirety of her reign doesn't seem like the ending to me. The shots we see here are probably only going to take up probably the first 10 minutes of the episode. And so we'll have so much time for them to talk to each other, for them to understand the craziness of what has happened, and for something to be done about it. So we have to look at what characters are actually left in the show. Of course, this is the characters here at King's Landing, John Davos, Tyrion, but there's still people like Sansa in the North, Robin Arryn in the Vale, Edmund Tully of the Riverlands, Gendry to lead the Stormlands, and the new Prince of Dawn that probably won't end up in the show. If John decides to go against Danny, if he decides he must get all the people around, form a great council like Rhaegar was planning to do to his father, and oust her, what kind of support will he get? Well, of course, Sansa and Arya will back him. Sansa can very easily control Robin Aaron, and the Vale soldiers are pretty loyal to Jon anyway. Tommen can always come back with some wildlings, but it won't be that important. Edmund Tully will lead the Riverlands for the North and the Starks. The Westerland men have been entirely annihilated. And even if there was a few stragglers left after Jaime's death, Tyrion would lead that. And it's becoming increasingly clear that Tyrion's going to back Jon if he does decide to break with Danny. And then there's the reach where Tyrion has already promised to Bronn, so maybe he could actually get that. And lastly, Gendry in the Stormlands, who was given his position by Danny. Which the show tried to clearly make sure that, oh, that's on Danny's team now, he's got that person on wraps, apart from he loves Arya. And we know what Arya feels about Danny now. So aside from the Prince of Dawn, who's very far away and briefly mentioned, who probably won't intercede in the series, it seems like all of the realm would rally behind Jon and Tyrion. If he called the Great Council, the Lords, the Followers, the Commanders, the Armies would back Jon. Except for the Dothraki and the Unsullied. And so just like Danny predicted, I feel the forces of Westeros will push her out, regardless of how much fear she tries to use against them. But as always, I really want to hear what you guys thought about the episode we just got. And now that we're at the finale for the entire series, and the end game is finally here, all of those theories you've been holding about the end of Game of Thrones can finally be thrown down, because this is the moment. My heart hopes for a great council that Rhaegar could never achieve, but Jon does. But with the way the season's rolling, your guess is probably just as good as mine. So tell me what you think below.